I'll do a little background on the history because it's important to know how Napa got to where it is today. And we have a long um, history of winemakers and leaders that have helped develop Napa and bring it to where it is today. We have to start with this man here. This is George Calvert Yount. He started a, a, a land grant. He was awarded a land grant in, in 18, sorry, 1836. Planted vineyards, you guessed it, right outside the town of Yountville, where the town gets his name. And this, this vineyards that he planted were planted primarily with a mission grape. The mission grape was planted by the missionaries that came from uh, Mexico, like Father's Nipper Sarah, who planted grapes at all the missions that he um, established up and down the coast. And the last mission he established was in Sonoma. So the vines that he planted came from Sonoma, and they were the mission grape, which were really not very good grapes for making quality wine. They made great sacramental wine, but not quality wine. To really start the wine premium business, uh, we have to look to Charles Krug and Inglenook. So Charles Krug uh, was a European who came from, uh, from Germany. He established, obviously, Charles Krug. We had Jacob uh, Berenger who arrived, and we also had Gustav Niebaum, who was a Finnish fur trader. And they brought with them some of the European varieties, which are now famous. Uh, the first winery established was Charles Krug in 1861, and Inglenook created the first Chateau-style winery in 1879. And by 1889, Napa had over 140 wineries. It was booming. Some of the wines produced in Napa were winning awards and medals at some world fairs. In fact, uh, H. Walker Crab, Hamilton Walker Crab was a person who established a vineyard in Oakville called the Tokalan Vineyard, and it was winning uh, gold medals at the Paris, famous Paris um, uh, World Fair, which was in 1855. But it didn't live, the, the success didn't last too long because by the year of the turn of the century, we had phylloxera. So the acreage dropped from over 15,000 acres to less than 2,000 in just 12 years. And phylloxera really decimated the wine industry. Now, this is a root louse that kills the vine, and it took us a while to figure out a remedy for this, but uh, it, it took the wind out of the uh, growth of the Napa Valley industry. And to add misery on top of that, uh, we had prohibition, and we had the Great War, World War I, and then the Depression in the 1930s. So it was unfortunate. Uh, some people stayed alive in the 1920s during Prohibition by making sacramental wine or making wine that uh, get a prescription from your doctor. I, I need some medicine. And if, in fact, you can see, if you go to places like Inglenook, you'll see some of these uh, prescription bottles that your doctor would have allowed you to drink a little wine at night. And obviously, I'm sure it made everyone feel better. But it was a time when um, most of the wineries were left in disarray. Um, they were keeping up the vineyards. So at the end of Prohibition in 1933, things were difficult. There were only 12 wineries remaining. And most of those wineries um, didn't have any proper facilities for making great wine. 